Welcome to the city of Greensboro, North Carolina, where as you can see, I am standing downtown on a glorious spring day. You know, the Lord is just so good. I can remember 10 years ago when the Lord had called me to come to Greensboro. And in my journey here, I can truly say I have been blessed and been around a blessed people and a blessed church. The St. James Baptist Church is located 536 West Florida Street. And we are a blessed people and would love to have you to come worship with us, particularly now, this is COVID season, but it is post COVID. As we are returning back to church, you are welcome to come join us on Sunday mornings at nine o'clock. Please take the opportunity to call in, let us know that you're coming so we can put your name on the list. And then the protocol from there would be to check you in once you get there. And I would be glad to see you so we could worship together. Again, God bless you. Continue to be blessed. Pray for us. But most of all, join us. to be praised in the city of our God and the mountain of his holiness. For I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. With thy feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this day's journey. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this first Sunday in the month of March. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because this is the day you have made, <clears throat> and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, as we have come to this mountain to worship, God, we ask that you would descend on us, Heavenly Father, that you would bless us. We ask that you would occupy our minds with your spirit, our hearts with your spirit, our souls with your spirit, this atmosphere with your spirit. We ask, oh God, that you would transform us into disciples and make us worshipers right about now. Bless all of those, Heavenly Father, who are virtually in the worship service, God. God, bless them where they are. Bless their atmosphere where they are. We ask, oh God, that you would just again just prepare us for those great things. We bless you, oh God, and we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, our praise team is coming. If you would just join them this morning. If you're at home watching virtually, praise God bless you. Sing praise along with us and join us in the worship.
Jesus is real to me. Gives me victory. Ah, so many people, so many people doubt him. I can't live, I can't live, I can't live, live. live amen, amen. Him. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, that is why yeah. I love him so. He's real. Ah. He is real. Oh, he's real to me. In the morning, he's real. real. Hallelujah. Jesus. so real to us. Let's just bless his name on this morning, this wonderful day that the Lord has given us. He is worthy of all of our, of all of our praise. I hope you've had a exciting and wonderful week. I pray that the Lord has blessed you this week. I pray that you have walked in his graces and his mercies with love and with him abiding with you, I pray that you have shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone uh, during the week. That you were a witness to them, to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. For our God must be must be told. Amen. It's not something we had in our in our heart. This week began Wednesday began the, uh, the Lenten season on on Wednesday. And it will last until uh, the second Sunday in April, which is, uh, what's the third Sunday in April, which is Easter Sunday, I think the third Sunday. From the Lenten season, uh, began on Wednesday and will end on Easter Sunday. Um, we pray that during the Lenten season, you will take this opportunity uh, to, uh, to, to search yourselves, uh, to pray for yourselves, uh, to get closer uh, to the Lord. Uh, this is a wonderful time, I say all the time, it's a wonderful time uh, for you and God to get reacquainted with one another. Um, uh, the one thing we have to know about God is that is about ourselves is that we do not have an uh, inexhaustible amount of strength. Uh, we do have an inexhaustible amount of uh, spirit in us, but sometimes, uh, even though the spirit may be willing, sometimes our flesh gets weak. 
we do so much. We are human beings, and God knows that we are made. Of, he knows that we are made of flesh. Therefore, sometimes flesh gets weary and well doing. So I pray this is a wonderful time, a wonderful time for you to turn down your plates and fast for some things, pray, uh, get into your word, um, and spend quality time, as I would say, in God's face. Amen. Uh, and be a, uh, as one author put it, and be a God chaser. And that God will, will bless you and, uh, and, uh, and continue to equip you uh, with even greater power to do ministry. Um, so, again, Lenten season began Wednesday. It will end on, the, uh, Friday, uh, on the Easter Sunday. Um, this coming uh, Wednesday past, we had uh, the Ash Wednesday service at United Institutional Baptist Church. Uh, Pastor Johnny Freeman, and that was a, a wonderful word as well. This coming Wednesday, we'll be at um, World Victory Church, uh, Pastor Adrian Starks. Um, and we'll be at his church on um, Wednesday, coming at 7, uh, in person and virtual. Uh, if you're virtual, go to his website. Uh, in fact, uh, each Wednesday, it will be at a different church. And it's, it will be in person and virtual. So if you do not go in person to the churches that will participate, then you can always go to their website and watch their their service uh, as, as well. And so again, we want you to uh, just uh, be mindful. Uh, we have gleaners, uh, if you have not already picked them up, but we have gleaners. Our gleaners, um, I think they hold like $10 in, in quarters, if I'm not mistaken, right? $10 in quarters. We want you to please come by um, and pick them up. At least pick up, um, at least pick up two. Uh, amen, it's, it's not for $20. So at least pick up two. We want you to pick those gleaners up. And, um, and each day we ask that you know, the money saved from your fasting, from drinking sodas and snacks and those things you're fasting from, that's money saved. We ask that you will just only take a quarter or more if you would like, but at least a quarter a day and set it aside and fill up your gleaners and turn those gleaners in. Uh, we ask that you would, if you can, wait till Easter Sunday to turn them in or if, if you want to bring them by during the week when they're filled, that's fine. You can bring them by during the week. Uh, those gleaners will be earmarked for our time now. Uh, all of those uh, quarters will go into our time now. So please come by uh, the church and pick yours up or send someone to pick it up uh, for you. And as well, you can bring it back or send someone to bring it back. But we just want you again to participate during uh, the, Lenten, uh, the Lenten season. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna ask um, uh, Sister Lee is going to come uh, with an announcement for uh, the upcoming event for um, women's season. I said, good morning, honey. <laughs> good morning, global family. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning to you who are in the fellowship this morning. I have several dates and times to give out, and so I want you to uh, be attuned, uh, come back uh, to the recording um, because the word is going to be on fire this morning, number one, and you want to listen to it again, and number two, so that you can get these dates. So the first date that's coming up, we're in Women's History Month, and we are excited about that, and on uh, Friday, March the 25th at 7 p.m. via Zoom, we will have our Women's Ministry Fellowship on that Friday, we expect to have a high time in the Lord. We will be coming together um, for dinner, dessert, and discussions. So we want you to come with us. Bring your own dinner, bring your own dessert of your choosings, or two, and we know that some people, Ms. Barbara, like the vice versa. So dinner, dessert, or dessert and dinner is your choosing. So come fellowship with us as we are staying focused while promoting healing and providing hope. We will have guests with us on that evening to come and be with us and to share with us and to help promote healing and provide hope for us as women. And we will also have games and fellowship, learn more about our women's history. And then May 
2022 will be our women's season. On May 4th, Wednesday, May 4th, will be our prayer night of consecration. And on Wednesday, the 11th, the 18th, and the 25th, we will have guests to come with us and to bless us in word again for women's season 2022. And for women's season 2022, we are going to gather in person for our women's fellowship. <laughs> Woo! Yes. On Saturday, May 14th at the Wyndham Gardens and on Swing Road here in the beautiful city of Greensboro, we will have our women's fellowship, our women's brunch fellowship. We're asking you to come and to be with us. It is a cost associated with that of $35 per person. We will dine sufficiently for the queens that we are. So we will also have uh, entertainment and fun. We just need some good laughter right about that now, right? So much is going on in the world and to further promote healing and providing hope, we wanna come to just have a good time and fellowship. So again, that will be on Saturday, May 14th from 11 30 to 2 p.m. at the Wyndham Gardens in person, $35 per person. And then on Sunday, the May 15th, we will have our Women's Sunday with our special guests also on that Sunday. So keep those dates. Go back and look at them. Look at the beginning of the service, and those do uh, dates are on our announcements as well. Be blessed and enjoy your day. Amen. Thank you, First Lady. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. We pray much for our women's ministry, and we pray that God will continue to strengthen and bless them. Amen. For the queens that they are. Amen. Amen. So we pray God will continue uh, to strengthen them. Amen. It's offering time. It's time to be a blessing to our God for all that he has done for us. I am excited, 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 excited for the great things the Lord has done. He's done so much. You know, sometimes I just sit back and, you know, just try to, I try to just at least just, you know, just count uh, the blessings uh, the Lord has done. And I'm not talking about, you know, today or yesterday or since I've been saved. I'm, I'm thinking all of my life, amen, in my foolish days and then in my, in my wise days, I just think of how God has just kept me beyond. Uh, he was providing for me when I thought I was providing for myself. It, hello, I thought, I thought I was the man. I was the one getting up. I was the one going to work. I was the one bringing home the money. I was the one paying the bills. But then I heard the Lord say, yeah, but I kept you alive to be able to do all of that. And I was like, well, touche. So he, he, he's right. And so... But now that I have Christ in my life, I understand that all good and perfect gifts come from above. I cannot help but say, Lord, thank you. From the little of things to the minute of things to the biggest of things, I am so grateful. He has truly blessed us. He has given us the means of taking care of ourselves and our families. But he never want us to forget him. And I was other day I was listening to some people. They were uh, talking about their taxes, and you know we all you know have that that conversation sometime in our life, particularly this time of year. But the word says to render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, which is pay Caesar. We have to pay Caesar. Um, but then he says, but render unto God the things that belong to God. Amen. We 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 owe God. Amen for everything he has done. And he trusts that we would be good stewards and do what we're supposed to do. I want to thank all of those who came by this week and who have mailed their tithe, their offering in. Uh, you have been so, 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 so faithful. Amen. So give yourselves a hand. Thank God you have been faithful on top of faithful. Also, for those who have used Givelify or would like to use Givelify, you can go on the Givelify app right now. You can use Givelify. It's an easy transition. It is, it is a secure transition. Um, I, I use it all the time. Amen. And so um, you can also give uh, through Givelify. And maybe there's someone who may be watching who may want to give, never had opportunity to give. Maybe you're you're watching our broadcast for the first time and you're saying, you know, I want to give to your ministry in Greensboro. 
We want to be a blessing to your ministry. We watch you all the time, or I'm just watching you for the first time. Um, again, you can pull up the Give the Fire app, and you will pull up St. James Baptist Church, which is 536 West Florida Street, and you'll see that. I think there's a picture of the church there. Amen. Uh, and you can you can give through GiveLify. And so, again, let us pray over our offering. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you much more than thanks. From our hearts, we know, God, we are grateful. You freely give to us. And, Lord, your only, your only command of us is to be good stewards and to give back to you. Lord, you said to bring our tithe to the storehouses, which you've told us to do. Lord God, we thank you for the tithe. It is, it is nothing but a small tenth. But Lord God, that small tenth can open big doors and do great things. You can feed the hungry, Heavenly Father, with that. You, little becomes much when we put it in the hands of our master. So Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would bless in a mighty way those who have given and we ask, oh God, that those who have not tithed or may have not have their minds made up the tithe, we pray, oh God, that you will convict them, Heavenly Father, of their necessity and obedience to do so. Lord, we are so grateful of you being our God. We know you can do more uh, with the 10% than we can do with the 90. You are that kind of God. Your math is not like our math. And we are so grateful. Lord, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen again. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, our praise team is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're at home, why don't you just Hallelujah. stand, take a, take a stretch you, break. Hallelujah. Amen. Sip that coffee or that tea this morning. Praise God. Yes, Lord.
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You did it for me. For me, Lord. Thank you, God. You did it for me, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. That's a lot. That's a lot. to praise him. Amen. We in the Lord's house. Every now and then, he does deserve our praise. Come on, let's lift him up. Come on, if you're at home, this is a wonderful time. Wave your hands. Tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless this holy name.
Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give him some praise. We praise God. Every now and then, we need to do what the older folk used to call cut loose. Uh, every now and then. Every now and then, your feet ought to get light sometime. A tear, a tear ought to run down your eyes sometimes. And sometimes you ought to get at least a case of the I can't help it. For he is worthy uh, to be praised. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's house. Welcome to church on Sunday. And welcome to the communion Sunday for us as we share in his, in his blood and his bread on this day. For those who are watching at home, praise God for you. I pray God has entered into your dwelling place. I pray you have made your home a sanctuary this morning. I pray you have found a place in your room, in your house, somewhere that is consecrated for you and the Lord on, on today. Amen. You can shut the other doors and shut out even the other people. But at this moment in time, it's you and the Lord's time. And that means more than anything else. We talked about that this week in our Experiencing God Bible study. That your relationship with God ought to be a priority above all in your life and all others. God first. Amen. And if you put God first, in fact, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said all other things. He said, I'll, I'll add all the other things, whatever the things might be. I'll add all of that. But first, he says, I want you to seek me first. And so I pray today that you are seeking the Lord, particularly while he may be found. Time is winding up, y'all. And it's more closer today than it was on yesterday. And so we praise God that he has given us a wonderful opportunity to share in the kingdom on this earth while we yet have a chance. But yet we still got some, some folk yet that we got to get them in, y'all. Some family members, some cousins, some friends. We got to get them in. And that is up to the disciples of the Lord, and that is us. We praise this name on today. Let us turn, if we will, uh, being that this is the Lenten season, we want to, um, we want to hopefully stay in the Gospels uh, of the Lord. Uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. The Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 3 of Matthew. Chapter 3 of Matthew. If you have it, say amen. We're going to look at verse... Uh, let me start with verses 1, 2, and 3, and then we'll go down to verse number 13 um, through 17, which is the baptism of Jesus. Verse 1 in Matthew chapter 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come. This is he who has spoken, this is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Come down to verse number 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It's proper. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. You may be seated. As soon as Jesus was baptized, verse 16, he
He went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son. King James makes it, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. I want to talk, as the Lord shall guide uh, this morning, uh, from the subject, I want to talk about an, an anticipated reception. An anticipated uh, reception. Uh, church, many of us can recall what it was like the moment for us when we had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives, we recall that moment, that special moment, that day in which we all went down in baptismal waters. Somewhere along the line, we were baptized into, um, into, uh, 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 into the body of Christ, but we were baptized more so into, within a witness congregation. The pastor laid hands on us and baptized us and uh, took us to those waters. The crowd or choir sang, take me to the water, uh, take me to the water uh, to be baptized. None but the righteous. And they would say it again, none but the righteous shall see God. We remember that, y'all. We remember that and for some who may not have gotten baptized in may have not have had the luxury of being baptized in the church's baptismal pool, can remember those days in which they had to go down to the local, uh, to the local waters around them. There was, there was some lake, or I don't want to say creek, but at least some, some lake, some river, some beach, amen, where <coughs> they were uh, baptized. There may have been some creek, if that was all they had. But many can remember the day that they went down. You can remember the day of what it was like. Not just how excited you were, but how excited everybody else was around you, too. I, I can recall, because my wife and I were baptized at the same time, I can recall that October when we were baptized. We had accepted Christ in July. And uh, by the time we finished the new members classes and all, we were we were baptized. It was in the month of October, um, and when we no September early September September sep September October. Amen. Okay, and so uh, <laughs> and so she was shaking her head, and I thought I thought I was right. Um, and so, but I can recall that day. My family was there. They wanted to see their son get baptized. Uh, those members who were there, I can recall, in fact, our pastor had came to us when we were had our heads wrapped. We had on our white, amen, uh, amen, as if we were uh, new angels in the Lord. We had on our white, our heads were wrapped, and I can recall Pastor Riddick coming, talking to us and encouraging us and giving us prayers. I can remember Sister Sally McMahon uh, and uh, uh, Miss Wilson, uh, Deaconess Will Lovey Wilson, uh, Deaconess Rachel Ogburn, amen, those uh, older senior deaconess who were so kind and loving to us. They were so uplifting. They were so encouraging to us. You'd have thought we were their children. They were just so proud that we were candidates for baptism. And I can recall Pastor talking to us and telling us that normally, he said, I got some good news and some bad news. And the good news is that we normally uh, warm our water up. We, we, um, they had the luxury of hitting a light switch. A switch on the wall would heat the pool up. 
and get the water uh, temperature right in the pool for baptism. I am impressed, but I didn't know they could do that. He said, well, the bad news is somebody forgot to turn on the switch. And he says, I'm informing you now that the water is cold. And so I'm leaving that decision up to you, whether you want to put it off and wait to the next baptism, or you can go ahead on and I can still baptize you uh, today. And I took it in my heart, well, I'm like, well, since I'm here and we're here and you're here, there's no need to waste in people's time. Um, and we were dipped and we were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We were baptized into that cold water and we were blessed. It took me back. Now I understand when the older folks says that the water was cold. It chilled my body. Amen, but not my soul. That is the message of the gospel. John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus, who was the cousin of Jesus, who had went about spreading the word about repentance and that the Son of Man was coming ahead of him, but yet he was not the one. Um, in fact, he would be unworthy to even unlatch and carry his shoes. He went about preaching uh, gospel of repentance and preaching it uh, everywhere he went. And uh, a man who would only eat wild locusts and honey for an appetite. He was a blessed man and he had people following him. And there were those who came to him and repented of their sin. He had preached even to the Pharisees and Sadducees who some had some problems with his message, but believe it or not, some of those went with him and became candidates for baptism of repentance as well. He called them brood vipers. He attacked them. He was an aggressive kind of preacher, we would kind of say. He was a man who wanted to make sure that everybody understood his message. His ministry, bro, Walt, was stern. His ministry was bold. And he had really, really echoed the earlier message of the prophet. John's message really was not a new sermon. His message was the same sermon that the prophets had preached. Isaiah, Zechariah, Jeremiah, and them. Uh, their message simply was to Israel is that basically was that we have we have sinned against God. We have sinned against our fathers. And also now is the time for us to repent and turn back to God. That was the message of the prophets, which also became the message of John, known as the Baptist. Not that he practiced Baptist polity like us. Uh, he wasn't a Baptist. Let's get that straight. He was John the Baptist because he baptized those who repented of their sin. He did not have, he did not have a, 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 an autonomous uh, congregation like the Baptist church where the power goes to those on the floor. I, amen. Uh, uh, I, well, we can get into that doctrine later. Um, uh, it, it was, uh, had that been so, he would not have been able to preach. However, he was John the Baptist. Um, he did not have a Baptist, his cox, where they could call him out if, if they thought, therefore, he was out of order. Um, they did not allow, at that time, he, he was not a Baptist, which gave the right of the majority to govern. Uh, he was not one vote away from being. He was, a bat, he was a preacher preaching repentance, reminding them that the kingdom of God is at hand. And therefore, it starts with repenting from your sins and turning back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then there were those who thought, well, maybe he must be the one that the prophets talked about. And John says, no, I, I am not him. 
Oh no, I don't want to. I don't want to carry that load. Uh, I, I don't want to be that one. But there is one coming behind me whose shoes I am not worthy to unlatch. John the Baptist was. He was content with what he was doing because what he was doing, he was doing it by the omnipotent power of the Lord. Yes, yes. And the content of his message really, again, was nothing new. Several things about John's preaching was new. And there was, uh, there was what was new was that it was a sense of urgency. He, heard, he told them to hurry. It was a sense of urgency. John urged the crowds who came to hear him or simply to gaze at maybe him as some spectacle. He urged them with their urgency to repent. Not yesterday, not, well, not tomorrow, but today. I, I need you to repent of your sin for the kingdom of God is near. Then John focused his attention on his listeners not to come or the kingdom was listeners was not some distant future, but, but on the immediate situation. I don't want you, crowd, to, to put off tomorrow what really needs to be taken care of today. You, you know how it is. We, we, we would have gotten saved. We would have gotten saved, many of us. Now, I want to believe most of us. We would have gotten saved a long time ago, but we just kept putting it off. We, we would have gotten saved probably yesterday, but, you know, we were enjoying the pleasures of our sin. And so we didn't just think it was the right time. Uh, it wasn't that the Lord wasn't chastening us because I told you the other night in Bible study that no man can come unto God except the Spirit draw him. The Spirit was drawing some of us way, most of us prior to the day we accepted. He was always working on us. Somebody was praying for us and had, the, had us on their mind. Your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your granddaddy, big mama. Somebody was praying for us, asking the Lord, I know my children ain't in church. I don't know where they're at or what they're doing or who they're doing it with. But all I know, God, is I'm praying for my babies that someday... That they will come to you and make you the Lord and Savior of their life. And somewhere along the line, we were convicted. And guess what? We turned our little old life around, accepted Christ, and here we are, followers and disciples of the Lord. John says, I, I want you to repent, but there is an urgency for you to do it today. I, I don't want you to wait till tomorrow. You, you might die tonight. Your, your sins might find you out. You don't know what could happen between the, the, the time of my message and tomorrow. I, I don't want you to put it off tomorrow. That's what he tells me. I don't want you to wait till tomorrow or next week or next Sunday or the next revival. I don't want you to wait till Easter Sunday because Easter Sunday might be too late. I, I want you to repent because today is the day of salvation and harden not your heart. That was new for John. It was new. The other thing that was new was that John was talking about the element of baptism. And the element of baptism, he says, that he was giving was as a sign of their repentance. Now, uh, then after the sign of repentance that was, he was to give them, it was a symbol of repentance, but the, it was also the warning and the invitation were both given at the same time. The warning was repent for the kingdom of God is near. That was the warning. The invitation was come. Come now, my brother. Come. You, you Sadducees, because you, you're sad, you see, and you think you know everything, but you don't know nothing. Pharisees, y'all are fair, you see, but, but y'all ain't fair enough. Uh, you, you think you got the law packed down. Uh, you, you think because you don't do what others do that, that God is going to dismiss you as perfect. You, you think you are uh, above the law or, or obeyers of the law. But no, John says, no, you have sinned. You have fallen short of the glory of God. And so therefore, God, John says, you must come. That's the invitation. I want you to come and be baptized. And just as John was being uh, baptizing those, the crowds came to him, and they listened to him, and many of them were baptized. 
Something's great going on here. Many, particularly those of the religious elite, they had come, they were, they were quick to put themselves in the forefront of any popular movement that was going around. They, they could see no harm in at least doing this right, as if it was a rite of passage for them. They came, they saw no problem with at least doing this because in their eyes, at least John was staying on some safe ground. He wasn't proclaiming to be the Messiah. In fact, he told them that he was not. But there is one. Therefore, they said, well, since he is not claiming to be, then basically what they were saying in their psyche was, I guess it would do us no harm to go head on and get baptized and repent from our sins. John got a point. Yes, we have sinned. But since he's not the one, then what he is now doing is he is preparing us for the one. And that's what ministry really is all about. I'm not the one, but I'm preparing you for the one. I don't care what preacher you admire, what pastor baptized you, he or she was not and is not the one. I don't care how well, how enamored they can say it, how anointed they just might be, how much you would love to hear them over and over and over again, how many CDs you have purchased from them, you admire their preaching, their books, their writing, their scripts, it does not matter. At the end of the day, what really does matter and what you must know is that they are not the one. Be careful putting all your eggs in a basket and believing that somebody is really the one. No, we've all been called by God to prepare the people for his son. We've all preached and eventually put out the invitation when the doors of the church are open. It just amazes me how many times so people could get so caught up in believing that somebody is the one. No, let me tell you, and I hope some preacher don't ever claim to be the one. I don't care if he's a pope or a bishop or a archbishop or just a regular old Baptist preacher. It does not matter. Or just a little old preacher or upcoming little itinerary preacher who's going to be new. At the end of the day, they are not the one. And be careful, be careful putting your preacher or your pastor up on a pedestal so high, so high, so high that in your psyche you think he's the one. You got others believing he ain't the one. Let me tell you, you need to bring them down, amen, because, again, we are not the one. But I can tell you one thing. There is one. Oh, I know him. There is one who is coming, whose shoes I am not worthy to unlatch and carry. There is one. There is a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. No, I am not the one, but there is one coming who has healing in his hand. No, I am not the one. There is one who is coming who will allow the redeem of the Lord to say so. No, I am not the one, but I know a man from Galilee who will come with grace and mercy. No, I am not the one, but there is one who is going to come back for his church without spot or wrinkle. I I am not the one but there is one who has gone to prepare a place for us that where he is that we will be also John said I come to baptize you in the name of repentance now while John is baptizing he is at the Jordan River, a place I've yet to go, want, want, I want to go, but so much is going on in the world today, I don't know if I even want to go over that side of the map or not. But however, however, the Jordan is really not a large, it's not a real big river. It's, 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 it's not really as big as you might think it is. But John is at the edge of it. All, all he needed was just a corner of it. That's all he needed, was just a, just a corner of it. And he's baptizing them in the name of repentance. As he's baptizing them, he recognizes his cousin. He recognizes Jesus, who comes up to him 
And Jesus comes up to him to be baptized. John recognizes out of all those he is baptized, and he recognizes Jesus. Jesus is next in line. He's a candidate. He's bat being baptized. And, and, and John says, whoa, um, what are you somewhere? I'm just kind of play it off. What, what, what are you doing here? Um, uh, you, you've come to be baptized, but I have need to be baptized by you. I should be, I, you, I, I'm not even worthy to unlatch your shoe, Jesus. I'm not worthy to unstrap your dirty sandals that you have been walking the dirty, dusty streets of Palestine in. I'm not even worthy to unlatch your sandals and carry them for you. Uh, I have need to be baptized of you. Now, John was right. He was right. He was acknowledging the holiness of Jesus. But at the same time, he was acknowledging his unworthiness to even touch Jesus, to lower him down in the waters to be baptized. Jesus said, John, I, I understand what you're saying. John, I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate what you're saying. But he says, but, but John, you have to understand one thing. You have to understand that, that, listen, you may feel that you're not worthy uh, enough to be uh, for me to be baptized, but uh, however, John, it's, it's a fulfillment of the scriptures. And, and, and the fulfillment of the scriptures is proper for us to do this, John, because it is a fulfillment of my righteousness. And because it'll be a fulfillment of my righteousness, John, you must do this. You've got to do this. And, and, and John, the Bible says, consented to go ahead on and do it. And soon as John decided to go ahead on and do it or was convicted to do it, the Bible says that finally he baptizes Jesus. And when Jesus comes up out of the water, there was a voice. As he come out of the water, at that moment, the Bible says that the heavens opened up. And, and Jesus saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove. And then there was a voice from heaven saying that this is my son whom I love. With him, he says, I am well pleased. Church, this was what I call, this was an anten anticipated reception of Jesus. Because it was anticipated because it was a great moment for God. Strange for John the Baptist. Peculiar to those others around that John had just baptized. But it was anticipated from God for his son Jesus. He anticipated it because one... He has sent his only begotten son, that whomsoever believed in him shall not perish, but however have everlasting life. Well, well Jesus didn't need to be baptized. So I would say, well, why is Jesus being baptized? I mean, I thought being baptized was for sinners. And, and so why is Jesus being baptized? Why is he being baptized? Why is he going down in the water? Because if the Messiah, this is why, because if the Messiah was going to provide righteousness for sinners, he himself must be identified with sinners. You're missing that. If Christ himself had to be baptized, the reason why was to fulfill the law or to fulfill the anticipated law for righteousness, then, then, then for the righteousness of sinners, then he himself had to be identified with sinners. Therefore, he was baptized with sinners. You, you, you're missing that. Jesus' journey, uh, it was, it was, he mixed in with people. He himself was identified with others. They did not know who he was until he performed some miraculous sign or wonder that gave himself away. 
You, you, you missed that. Let me, let, me, let me draw you close. Let me draw you a little close. You got to remember that Jesus walked among common people. He sat down with wine bibbers and uh, uh, he didn't, it didn't say he drank with them, but he did sit down with them. He, he, he mingled with children so much so that the, the, uh, that the disciples had a problem with him even being around little children. And he had to somewhat get them straight and say, uh, unless you humble yourself like one of these children, you, you, the king, you won't even see the kingdom of God. He, he, he blended in. He talked to a woman at the well who had four husbands and the man she was with wasn't hers. He, he, he sat, he, he, he mingled, he went, to, he went to the house of Martha and Mary uh, and, and, and Lazarus. Uh, he, he sat down with common folk. And so therefore, they did not know, people didn't know who he was. If you think I'm kidding, then why in the world that when they came to arrest him, why did they, why did they need Judas uh, to point him out? Because they did not know. The Roman police did not know just by looks, by the way he was dressed, by the way he was talking to them and hanging out with them. They didn't know. That's why Judas said, well, look, it's going to be hard for you to know which one he is because really he one of us. He's down to earth like one of us. He's humble like one of us. He looks like one of us. He dresses like one of us. And he somewhat really acts like one of us. So the only way, Roman soldiers, the only way y'all going to know who he is is if I go up to him and kiss him, which was a custom for Jews, uh, then you will know which one he is. And so Jesus, uh, so the word says that he was baptized with sinners. So that he can be identified with sinners. And that's why Jesus can be identified with us as sinners. Though he has not sinned. He can identify with us as sinners. He know what life is like. He know what we go through in everyday life. He knows what life is like. He knows the flesh. He knows what it buried. He knows what's going on with us and around us. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He understood and he knew that in these low grounds of sorrow, he knew that life was going to sometime deal us a hand we could not handle. He knew life was going to be a burden on us. And he knew that in this life, we shall have tribulations. He became a he became identified with the sinners and so therefore he was not a sinner but yet he identified with us and so now he's being baptized into the waters and because he's being baptized now you got to remember that uh that this baptism was not a baptism a man uh of, of really of repentance for him because he didn't have to repent but uh, a baptism of identification that he can identify with the sinners and so now the act here that, that, that John had did the act of using water to admit Jesus or to admit a person into the Christian community is what baptism does. Now, uh, now, now, this baptism was an introduction that now Jesus is a part of us, the Christian community. Um, we were baptized to be identified with the Christian community. Um, we were baptized, but we were not baptized into the kingdom. Let me just get quiet for about two seconds, and I'm going to come back and get you. Our baptism did not baptize us into the kingdom, not, not our water baptism. Our water baptism baptized us as witnesses to be identified with the Christian community. And so therefore, now, now to be baptized in the kingdom comes with uh, a confession out of the mouth. Believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and confess with thy mouth and thou shalt be saved. When that takes place, now you have been placed into the kingdom of God. Now, how we know that you have did that, again, now 
what takes place next is now the water baptism in front of the Christian community, which now is identify you with the Christian community. And so therefore, we don't want to get this thing confused. That's why uh, the book of uh, Romans reminds us that we are buried with him. We read that scripture at every baptism. We are buried with him in baptism. In like manner, we, are, we have arose, talking about coming out of the water, in a newness of life. Which simply means that when you are baptized, uh, when you go down in the water, you may go down a wet center. No problem with that. You may even come up a wet center. But that did not cleanse you from your sin. That didn't, what cleansed you from your sins was the blood. What cleansed you from your sin was the blood of Jesus from Calvary's cross. What, what cleansed you from your sins is your confession on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the blood of Jesus wiped away the slate clean from your past, your current, and your future sins. That's what the blood has done. That's what the baptism in the kingdom, but the baptism in the Christian community, which means, therefore, if, 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 if baptism put you in the kingdom, then Jesus would have had to take that brother down from that cross and find some water for that brother and get that brother baptized. But he did not tell him that. He said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Come on, talk to me, somebody. He didn't say, well, if I had time, I'd get you down from this cross and get you over there to that lake real quick. But I'm nailed up and I can't get down right about now. No, Jesus said, look, the fact, the, fact, the fact that you know who I am and confess who I am up there on that cross, he said, you shall, I can't speak for that other brother over there, but you shall be with me on this day in paradise. Let, let, let me move on for time's sake. So there was the anticipated reception of Jesus who's now being baptized. Now, here is, the, here is what I really love about this whole thing. Now, the voice from heaven comes down. And just check this out. A voice from heaven comes down. And the voice that comes down was the voice of God the Father. Okay? The voice of God the Father comes and comes down. And, and, and so... Then we have uh, uh, the, the, the father who's, who, who spoke to the son who was being baptized. And then we have the spirit who descended on the son as a dove. Well, Pastor, how's that helping me? Well, you, you, you missed what I said. You had the father who spoke to the son. You had the son who was being baptized. Then you had the spirit who descended like a dove on the son. Now you have the Godhead, the triune God. Now you have the Trinity. Now you have God in action, the the, the God the Father in action. Now you have the son in action. And now you have the Holy Spirit is uh, in action. Now you have the complete God here who had descended, listen to this, and fell down and accompanied one man. Which means, which means, which means that all three persons of the God here were present at this event. God was there, the Son was there, and the Holy Ghost was there. Now Jesus, now Jesus now is ready to do ministry. He has, he has all the equipping that he needs right about now. And so, so, and I love this because it helps me to understand that, 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 that what God was doing here was preparing Jesus now to go forth with his earthly ministry now. 
he is now prepared to go forth because now he has everything he needs. I mean, if you got God, the Father, if you got, if you've got, if you got the Son and you got the Holy Spirit, what else do you need? You don't need nothing else. You got everything you need. You, you don't need anything else. You just need the faith to believe that God, the Father, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit abides within me and lives within me. That's all you need to know now. You need to know that you can do all things through Christ Jesus now who strengthens you. You need to know now, amen, that you are somebody and that God has prepared you and God has anticipated that you would do great things for him. <clears throat> so now you are ready to now do what the Lord has called you to do. And I love it because now, if you now look at what happens next is that in his life, what God was doing is that God was now preparing Jesus for something here. In fact, he was preparing him for chapter 4. He was preparing Jesus for chapter 4. Well, Pastor, I don't read my Bible. What happened in chapter 4? Well, let me tell you what happened in chapter 4. <laughs> chapter 4 tells us of the, uh, gives us the personal preparation of Jesus, the, how our Lord was blessed to overcome three temptations. The first temptation here that Jesus, uh, G, uh, Satan, he's hungry. He had been fasting, and this is the Lenten season. And let me help you. Yes, if you're fasting during this Lenten season, I can tell you right now, you will be tempted. Satan is going to tempt you to break your fast. Because if he can get you to break your fast, he can get you to miss your blessing that God has for you. That's why he tempted Jesus. Jesus on a 40-day fast, just like we are. And so all of a sudden, he says, that, uh, Satan says to Jesus, I, I know you're hungry and, and haven't eaten anything, haven't drank anything, and you know, you can't make it like that, you know. Uh, the Krispy Kreme sign is flashing hot over the, on the other side of town. Um, amen. Olive Garden got discounts. Amen. Uh, uh, I, you, you can't make it like this, Jesus. You can't do that to yourself. Uh, I, I know you're hungry. and I, I, In fact, uh, uh, I can see your ribs. Uh, you, your mouth is salivating. Amen. Stephanie's is open right down the street from you. House of Prayer got pork chops on sale this special this week. Uh, Jesus, you sure you got to do. You, you ain't going to be able to make it. Won't you just go ahead head on since you don't have access uh, amen since the Chick-fil-A lines are so long why don't you download the Chick-fil-A app on your phone and you can order on your phone and why don't you just go ahead and take those stones and turn them into bread he says no Jesus said no I can't do that because man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God no I, I, I can't do that and so he says okay well he goes on he comes back again messes with Jesus again he said well Jesus I tell you what I tell you what I tell you what he says uh, why don't you just uh, why don't you throw yourself down uh, below these rocks down here why don't you just why don't you just throw yourself in other words throw jump off this cliff because because <clears throat> he says the, the word says you gotta know Satan knows the word he said because the word says that the angels will bear you up bless your feet dash against the stone you don't have to worry about that I, I know who you are Jesus you know you know you know you know me and you here you know uh, we was in the heavens together before I got kicked out so you know I know the word Jesus and so I want you to understand if you just jump off the, the angels are not going you are the son of God the angels are not going well that's how we say it the angels ain't going to let your feet dash against the stone Jesus and Jesus said no Satan you need to remember one thing too the word also says to put he said do not put the Lord God to the test that's why it's important to have some word in you and know some word so you can have something to fight back you don't fight the devil out with cussing him out you got to have some word in you to fight the devil I can tell you that right now you can talk all that gangster stuff all that nonsense all that all that crazy foolishness stuff that you know and do, but that does not budge Satan one time what does budge him what does make him move what does make him leave you alone is if you know some word you got to fight him with word because he's using word to fight against you. That's how he deceived Eve. He didn't deceive Eve any other kind of way. He used the word. He said, well, hey, uh, he said, well, Eve, no, the Lord didn't say that. But what he did say was, and she kind of contemplated and said, you know what, maybe you're right. Maybe that is what he said. But you got to know what the Lord said. You got to have that word in your heart. Then Satan comes back again. Satan says, uh, come here, uh, come here, come, come here, Jesus. F follow me uh, up on this mountain here. L look, look, come on, let's climb this hill. Look at all, look at all those kingdoms down there. 
Just look at all of that. Look, look, at, look at them city lights. Look at all of those kingdoms. Look at all of those people. Look beyond the other side of those mountains. Look at all that land. Look at all, look at, just look at all of these kingdoms around what you could have. If you bow down to me, I will give you every one of those kingdoms. That's what he told Jesus now. It's like he's trying to make a deal with him. You know. Now, see, you got to remember, deal or no deal, you, you got to remember this. See, this is what we do wrong. Our worst mistake is we equate, we equate Satan with Jesus. You got to remember, you can't do that. You know why? Because, one, Satan is the prince of this world. I don't know about what you have learned in school, but no prince overrules a king. If, 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 if Jesus is king, then there's only one king over the kingdom. And, and so therefore, you got to remember, if there's only one king over his kingdom, then, then the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. They who live it, they who dwell therein, all belongs to the king. Then how in the world can the prince give me something that he don't even own that ain't even his? Let me, let me hasten on. And so now, now we got a problem. Theologically, we got a problem. Now I know I'm messing somebody up, but come, come, just come, just follow me. What happens is, see, we, we always equate Satan with, with, with Jesus. And, you know, well, we say, you know, whether you know how the devil is, how he messes with us, and, and this and that. And this. Let me tell you something. No, 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 no. That's why we give the devil too much glory. We give him too much glory. Everything happened, it must be the devil. This happened, it must be the devil. If this happened, then you, something didn't go through, it must be Satan. So this happened, one of our children, well, it must be the devil. This happened, it must be the devil. Now, let me tell you, some stuff is God trying to rearrange stuff in your life. Sometimes God put obstacles in front of you because he don't want you to go that route. He wants you to go this route. Sometimes God allows stuff to happen so it can strengthen you and make you better and make you pray more and make you know his voice and heed to his commands. Satan don't get the glory for everything. He's just a prince. And so now, all God was doing as I close, all God was doing here with this baptism was he was preparing Jesus for his chapter four. And I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but I believe God is preparing all of us for our chapter four. Oh, we just don't know when chapter four is going to come, but it's going to come. It's going to come, bro. Well, it's going to happen. We just don't know when, where, or how. But it's going to happen. But all God is trying to do <clears throat> is he's trying to equip us with everything we need to handle the next chapter in our life. That, that, that's why I love that song by Daryl Coley that we, uh, we used to sing back in the day. That he's preparing me for something I cannot handle right now. That is so true. That's why God is allowing this. you got to be baptized. You've got to have Jesus in your heart. You've got to be identified with God, the kingdom, and his church because he's preparing you for some stuff. And I don't know about you, but I want to, I want to pass the test. Every test the Lord send my way. I might stumble the eyes, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is what Satan was trying to use on Jesus. He still tries to use it on us. But praise be to God that I got some word in me. Praise be to God that I am anointed, that I have the spirit in my life. Praise be to God that the son is operable in my life. Praise be to God that the father has me in the palm of his hand. And once you are in his hand, nobody, nothing, nothing can cast you out no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper it simply will not work praise be to god that he has me a son and an heir and a joint heir in his kingdom you ought to bless his name you ought to lift him up you ought to give him glory for him allowing to be a part of your life thanks god thank god for an anticipated reception 
thank God that he anticipated. He was eager. He was, he was, he was excited to see. He was waiting for his son. Therefore, God says that same anticipation, that same excitement, he has, he has given us. As sons, as daughters, he has, he, has given it to, he has given it to us as well. And we're just so grateful. We're so grateful that the Holy Spirit is in our life. Maybe there's somebody who have heard this sermon, who have heard this word, and says, you know what, I, 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 I need to become a candidate for baptism. Well, before you can do that, you must first make a confession. Do you believe Jesus Christ is Lord? Hallelujah. Do you believe that he died on Calvary for your sin? Do you believe that he is coming back for his church? Hallelujah. If so, you can make that confession with your mouth right now. Make that confession. I believe. I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe that I am a sinner that need to be saved by grace. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I confess he died for my sin. If you can do that, now you become a candidate for baptism. If you, can, if you truly confessed in your heart the Lord Jesus, you were just placed into the kingdom of God. If you made that confession. Well, pastor, what's my next step? Your next step is to become a candidate for water baptism. To be identified with us, the Christian community, the Christian church. That's, that's what's next. If you are that person, you are that candidate, you can call our church number 336-273-0822 or 0823. Call us. You can call even now. You can call and give us your information. Someone is there even right now to answer the phone. You can give us your information and you can let us know, I want to be a part of the church. Well, you don't have to join St. James. Maybe, maybe you're watching, you live in a different city and there's a church near you that you've been riding past every day. You, you, you have to join what's local. You have to make that, make that confession. The church is global where you worship at is local. We ask that you would uh, Christian experience, maybe rededication. Amen. Let us prepare at this time as we close. We want to prepare lastly for our communion. If you have your communion cups with you, this is the time in which we take communion. We want to pray over our communion. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege that you've given us to drink of the cup, to eat of the bread. You said as often as we do it, to do it in remembrance of you. We ask, oh God, that as we receive the cup, we will wait for one another. We ask, oh God, if we receive the cup, that we would also not judge others, that we would judge ourselves at this time. We will repent of our own sins at this time, that our hearts will be cleansed and worthy to take communion. We know we are unworthy to take it. We know we are unworthy to administer it to anybody else. But without the shedding of your blood would be no remission for our sin. That made us worthy. And until then, God, we ask, oh God, that you will keep our hearts pure. Cover us in your blood. We need you, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. When Jesus was with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body which has been broken for you. And likewise, he took the cup and said that this cup represents the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Amen. As we prepare for our closing prayer and prepare to dismiss, keep in mind those on our healing and recovery list. We pray, God, for healing for our church family. We pray, oh God, for those who, we pray for those who are in hospital. We lift up uh, Brother Howard Owens right now. Yes. That you would touch his body in Jesus' name. We lift up uh, Brother Bernard's brother David James this morning. 
that you would touch his body right now in the name of Jesus. Among our congregation, there are those who are sick. Among our congregation, there are those who are real sick. So we ask, oh God, that you would touch their bodies and touch their minds. God, we lift up this country, this war, Heavenly Father, uh, that is taking place in, uh, and, uh, with Russia and Ukraine. We ask, God, for peace. Have mercy on them. And have mercy on all of us as we sit back and watch this unfold in our eyes. You're the, you're the, you're, 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 you're the God of peace. We ask, oh God, that you would deliver those people. We ask, oh God, that you would stop that Russian army in their tracks. You got the power, yes, Heavenly Father. You, you got the power to turn the dirt into mud. Therefore, ch uh, Herod's chariots can't even get through the mud. You can do that with the tanks. You can allow it to rain on them for 40 days and 40 nights. Their tanks can't even move. You can turn their pruning hooks into plowshares. You can, you can lift up their, uh, you can lift up their valleys. You can exalt their valleys. You can bring down their mountains. You can make their crooked roads straight. We ask, O oh God, that you would have mercy and do it. Have mercy, O oh God. War is not the answer. Peace and love is the answer. Man living in harmony is the answer. Have thy way. Have thy way. In Jesus' name. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding and great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. And when Jesus with his disciples, the word says he told them that I will no longer drink from this fruit of the vine with you anymore until the day come but I will drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. And they sang to him, and they went out to the Mount of Olives. We are dismissed from this mountain. Victory Amen. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get, get thee behind. behind. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Thank you for watching the St. James Baptist Church broadcast. We pray that the Lord has blessed you and that powerful word that was preached on this morning. Continue to support us. Continue to watch our broadcast every Sunday at 9 o'clock. If you would like to come worship with us, please call the church during the week and let us know that you're coming so that we can put your name on the list and have you to worship with us on Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful week and have a wonderful summer. God bless you.